Okay, well, uh, it is a beautiful Thursday morning here in uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee, and uh, I just am out on our deck, our screened-in beautiful deck that I feel so blessed to have. This, this deck probably was one of the main reasons why we settled on this house, which is... Um, not exactly what I had envisioned uh, in moving to the to the mid south to mid mid ten as we call it here. Um, I think I was mostly hoping for like a spread, you know, with um, a couple of acres and a little elbow room, but this actually fit our checklist of needs really nicely and um, so yeah happy about that but anyway um, it's overcast today but it's only in the 60s and I got up this morning and uh, went for a run run walk I don't run as well as I used to because I am getting up there in age um, and I've put on you know, some weight since we moved. I don't know what that's about. I don't think it's the food because I don't really eat. Um, sorry, just looking at the neighbors. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, um, but uh, it's been good. Uh, so I got out this morning and did a little, I have like a five mile little loop that I can do one way or the other. Part of it, uh, maybe only about not even a quarter of a mile, is out on what's called the Nashville Gallatin Pike. It's also called the Johnny Cash Parkway 31E and Hendersonville Main Street. It's probably got some other names too. But it's a, you know, it's a, it's a four lane roadway. There's a, a bunch of them that sort of spoke out from Nashville downtown, kind of the central area, and then go out to the suburbs. And they call them Pikes, um, which was actually named for the Turnpike, which was, you know, this wooden thing that if you wanted to use the road, similar to the Turnpike's today in the, on the East Coast and other places, you know, where you'd have to pay to use the road and to take your wagon and your merchandise through, you would go through the pike and pay. And uh, they, call it a, they call them pikes here, but the, the little paste turnstiles are gone or whatever. But anyway, <clears throat> so about a five mile run. So I have to go out on just a little bit uh, you know, I have to run kind of on the shoulder of the road as cars are going by. There's no sidewalks in a lot of Tennessee for some reason. Most people don't walk anywhere, evidently. Um, but uh, And then it takes me down and around and through some beautiful neighborhoods and some, you know, f tree foresty areas and things like that. And it's just so wonderful to get out. I listen to some church talks um, or I'll listen to a lot of Spanish church stuff um, <clears throat> because one of my callings here is well my only calling I should say is as a, a ward missionary in Spanish because that we do have sister missionaries who do Spanish Latinos and um, by the way can you hear me okay is the sound working I, I don't know I think it is. I'm using my, my phone uh, to do this, but it's connected through my thing. And anyway, hopefully you can hear me okay. So, um, yeah, just feel very grateful and blessed. It's it, We're coming up on a year, if you can believe it, of being here already. And, um, and I just feel very, very... Uh, blessed to have made the decision to have followed kind of the spirit that um, moved us to move. Uh, we absolutely miss and love 
our wonderful friends and ward members from Riverton where we lived for 18 years and uh, we've been back to visit once um, but uh, it's we were just as we were coming home from the temple last night we try to get there once a week it's uh, down in Franklin about 45 minutes away um, as we were coming back we were just thinking how great it is that we continue to um, you know we have all these dear wonderful we were thinking of people that we lived by in Orem back in the 90s and early 2000s and how they have become lifelong wonderful friends and then we have this other group of lifelong wonderful friends from 2005 to 2023 and now we've been here about a year and we're once again making lifelong wonderful friends and what a blessing it is to be able to just get out away from Utah honestly and um, not that we don't love Utah and we absolutely love it miss it everything about it is great there's a reason why it's you know one of the top destinations for people to move or retire or raise a family if if you're watching this and you've never lived there consider it but we had our fill <laughs> um, not not uh, not for any negative reasons just uh, just time for a change uh geography topography uh culture accents food church service and otherwise um and so uh it's just been so let me go this i was gonna say not only did we uh, i don't know but i'm just grateful that we um that we were able to follow that instinct and and go now some will say well why did you do it many of you probably by now already know um, that one of the huge reasons was that you know we started having grandchildren and our little grandson Harry moved out here with his parents my son and our daughter-in-law our daughter Jess uh, she really is our daughter-in-law she's not an actual blood daughter that's you know those of you that are not members of the Latter-day Saint faith um, may misconstrue what I just said there um, we, <laughs> we, uh, we we don't marry off our children to one another um, <laughs> hey Kirk Tyler I, so nice to hear from you. And Saeed is, uh, if he's watching, he is uh, such a sweet young man. Some of you might have seen the video that I posted last week or two weeks ago. Saeed is from Egypt, and uh, and uh, he is uh, just here in America, um, trying to make his way and succeed and and hopefully uh, earn money to send back to his family and all those kinds of things. But um, he's a good young man. But anyway, so what else? The Tennessean experience, uh, experiment is, uh, like I say, about a year in. Um, it's a day like today where it's, it's cooled off nicely. Uh, we've got some rain threatening. Um, and we've just absolutely loved the humidity. Has been awesome. Uh, if you're anything like me, of course you enjoy the 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 dry air of the west um but only in certain a certain measure uh it sometimes just gets to be too much for my sinuses and skin and so i've loved having being able to just kind of sleep with the window open and and have uh, a little little denser little more humid air um, for breathing at night and things like that but the summer really wasn't horrible I, I, our, we have a couple of air conditioning units you know and fans all over the house and it really just doesn't get all that hot I love you too Jess thanks sweet girl um, what's cool too is not only do we have Josh and Jess just living six minutes by car down the road in a beautiful home um, they're so blessed with and now they have two kids so I was gonna say Harry was the grandson that we kind of moved out here for and then they had Lily and she's oh my gosh I can't even 
I can't even explain how much I adore that little turd. Um, she's just, anyway. So we had, and, and Liz was like, l last night on our way home from the temple, we were actually arguing over whose idea it was to move because I said to her, you know, after all the years of me wanting to move, because I've been trying to get her to move forever. <laughs> Todd, I understand Filipino humidity is pretty much year round. And I'm saying Tennessee humidity is really only for like two months in the summer and the rest of the year it can be more or less humid but I mean and it's otherwise it's perfect but anyway we were arguing last night about you know and kind of in a fun way whose idea it was and we we weren't taking credit we were blaming the other person <laughs> for moving here <clears throat> but but not really because we because for years I've been trying to get her to do it. And then when the kids moved out here, she just said, I can't, I don't know if I can live without my grandson being, and, and they had lived in Idaho where we could just leave on a weekend, on a no notice and drive three hours up to Idaho Falls and, and visit or stay the night or whatever, come back the same day even. You know, but this is, you know, a two day drive away. So, um, Anyway, so that's one, and, and I said, and it's funny, it was ironic that I had been pushing to move all of those years, wanted to raise the kids somewhere else, give them a mission field opportunity. And, uh, and I said, it was ironic that I finally, after all those years of, of encouraging her, I was, I was good in Riverton. I, I finally, I mean, I, I've always loved it there, but it was like, eh, I'm okay. We, I love our house, I love our neighbors, I'm settled in. And that's when she said, you know, I can't live without my grandkids. And um, so not only do we have them just five, six minutes up the road, which is awesome, uh, but we also live in different wards, which is great because that's definitely what we wanted. We didn't want to be on top of them. Um, I want them to live their own lives and not have grandma and grandpa literally. There was a house like <laughs> one street away. That was kind of tempting for a minute. Um, but on our list was, we just don't want to, we don't want them to feel like we're, you know, you know, and still we're very close. We're in the same stake, but we're, we're both kind of near the borders of our, well, we're both in Hendersonville, um, but our, our ward boundaries are kind of overlap a little bit. So, but we also have our oldest son, Christian, who lives and his name is not Christian Christopher. That's all I, I think family and friends understand that Christopher is, is just my middle name. Um, but anyway, so Christian lives up in Ohio, up in Dayton, um, the Dayton area. And so he and his girlfriend were just down last weekend, which was so great. Uh, it's just so neat. I can't even, I don't know why it th thrills me to live elsewhere after so many years and to love it. I mean, if I could, well, I could, but I'm not going to, but I mean, if I spun the camera around and you could just see our backyard and just the difference, you know, we live on a hill, there's trees growing, there's deer and wild turkeys and ducks, and there's a lake about two minutes in that direction that's actually the Cumberland River. Um, you know, Johnny Cash's house is just over there, about a mile and a half. He's dead. He died some time back. Uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, we're just <clears throat> so, so delighted. In fact, um, so, so we, sh we have season tickets to the Nashville SC. That's the MLS club that plays uh, in Nashville. The Nashville, uh, they don't have a name. They're just Nashville Soccer Club. Beautiful stadium. And uh, we kind of switch off who goes each game uh, between Josh and me and Jess and Liz and um, sometimes Harry. And then tomorrow, Josh and I are zooming up to Cincinnati, which is four hours north. And uh, Christian is going to come down from Dayton and the three of us are going 
to see Jeff Lynn. Well, technically it's Jeff Lynn's ELO, which it's his anyway. I don't know how there are people who could possibly give a crap about Electric Light Orchestra without Jeff Lynn. I mean, if you know the history of music, you must know Jeff Lynn is one of the all-time pop music geniuses. Uh, just look up his name. And he has written and produced and performed some of the greatest pop hits ever and is just so good. But he's 76 years old now. And he's on what he's calling his final American tour. And I have yet to ever see him live. Josh went and Jess went uh, a couple of years ago, I think up in Washington or Oregon or somewhere. But now that he's doing his last tour, it's so great because we have, we, have we have him in Cincinnati, which is where the three boys can all meet. I only wish that John and Matt and Scotty could be there with us because they all love Jeff Lynn as well. Uh, so we're going up there tomorrow. We're gonna stay the night in Cincinnati right downtown and just it's great to live in a place where you can drive four hours in any direction and have, and go through you know and be in seven or eight nine ten different u.s states and eight or ten different metro areas you know atlanta birmingham memphis uh cincy columbus raleigh you know i know my friend jody serve lives over in north carolina I've been threatening to take a, 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 a quick trip out there. I would love it if he took me fishing. He's some kind of outdoorsman stud from North Carolina. We went to the same high school in Orem, and I've been meaning to get out to see him, uh, which could be fun. Uh, so all of everything is going just splendidly. Uh, Becky Manning says, get some Skyline Chili when you're in Cincinnati. You know, it's funny, Becky. Um, just this morning, I was reading an email, an unsolicited email from some doctor who says that beans are some of the worst things for you because they have lectin. Beans and tomatoes, evidently, are two uh, vegetables or whatever they're called that um, make your gut bigger. So I might have to pass on that chili offer. Well, I guess it's not an offer. But we sure miss the Mannings. Again, these are lifelong friends that we haven't seen in years, but we knew we've known for 20, 30, 28, about 27, 28 years now. And it's just so neat to be able to continue to kind of widen our circle of friends and peers and loved ones as we move around and what was cool is we were coming back from the temple and we were talking about all y'all is we said you know we may not we may move away but the cool part is is we know that there are friends f through the eternities and that we have forever to catch up and hang out and play card games or whatever it is we'll be doing <laughs> and so it's not as hard for us because it's like we really do know that, that that's the future and that this tiny brief little life um, we we want to experience and as many places and people as we possibly can now having said that I recognize that not everybody um, is fortunate and privileged enough to do what we did. W what have we done? We really aren't wealthy at all. I mean, if you followed my career, you, you would naturally arrive at the conclusion that I am penniless. Um, we, we've lived hand to mouth pretty much our whole marriage, yet we've never wanted. Um, we've always had just enough for what we need we've had sufficient for our needs as the saying goes and uh and enough to to be charitable 
and, and give back uh, f freely and generously. But uh, we've never, th the key is, is that we don't feel like we've ever lived beyond or above our means. We've done our best to save in interest-bearing opportunities. Um, and we've really, really stuck to the not being in debt principle. If we can't afford it, we don't get it, which is probably why you've never seen videos of us on boats or in RVs. Not to say that people that have those things are all steeped in debt. Hopefully they've been able to just buy them as they go. Our cars have always been bought, paid for, uh, and if they weren't, they were paid off very quickly. Um, the house that we built and purchased in Riverton, you know, we got in, in 2005 for, you know, a little over $300,000. We saved our money to finish the basement. Um, we paid it off. Well, we, we didn't pay it off, but we bought it down as much as we could until such time as we were able to sell it last year. And we really only owed a very small amount of principal, and so all of it was profit, which allowed us to then come and buy this beautiful, just big enough for us and visitors home in cash and have a little left over to you know and so um i recognize that not everybody has so for us that was like the greatest blessing to be able to do that um you know i i i heavenly father has somehow or other miraculously blessed me to be able to provide for a family of seven um without really tons of education. I mean, I have a master's degree that I finished when I was 45 or whatever I was. Um, I've never really used that degree for a job, although I was blessed with a re couple of really great full-time jobs through the years, also that I could continue to try to be an actor or a performer or do what my, just, you know, what I think I was born to do. But none of those things really, uh, you know, make any money at all. Um, so we've just been really, really fortunate and lucky. And, um, and so I guess what I want to say in my little video that is now going on way too long, uh, I can't tell, but it's probably been half an hour, is um, we're just extremely blessed. We know where our blessings come from. And thank you, Daniel, that means a lot. I appreciate that. Uh, and every day for me professionally is, uh, at times, is a mystery. Um, I have been so privileged, so, so blessed to have worked on projects that are uh, so good and mean so much to me and to other people. And they kind of come rarely. And it's those gaps in between that I have learned that the covenants that I've made with my Father in Heaven in the temple have sustained me and sustained us to the point that I wake up each morning and scratch my head and look heavenward and say, how in the world have we done this? Um, and man, am I grateful for that. Uh, my mother was a, a, a huge source of, I think, that philosophy of just do what is right, let the consequence follow. And don't focus all of your energy on money and wealth. Uh, I think many of us are so programmed to think that that's what God wants for us. Or, 
you know, that that's as long as you, he, when they say, when prophets and apostles say, God doesn't really care what you do for a living as long as you're building Zion and doing it. I think there's a lot of truth to that for sure. But I think the most important part is honoring the covenants that we, we make with him. And when we do that, we don't have to worry. Now, of course, that doesn't mean we just sit around twiddling our thumbs. We're actively engaged, uh, but, but the priority is, how can we help thee? How, who can I serve today? How can I do it? What, what can I do to, to be an instrument in thy hands? And, and when we're about his business, he, he provides. He provides. Lunch is free. Some of you will know what I'm talking about and who I'm sort of quoting when I talk about free lunch. If you do, go ahead and type the person's name in the comments. If you don't know who it is, that's too bad. But anyway, um, <laughs> but, there, but there is someone out there who's, who's passed away who, who, uh, who talked a lot about free lunch and how the world's view is, is there is no free lunch. And his whole thing was, is well, you don't understand Jesus. You don't understand the gospel. Uh, everything is free. Uh, but anyway, so, so that's, that's kind of our update from, from the volunteer state. Uh, we live in what they call mid-10, middle state. It's funny how everywhere else is central Utah, central California, central Idaho, central Michigan, whatever. There's no central Tennessee. It's called middle Tennessee. They use the term middle. So we're in middle Tennessee. And uh, to the east of us, are the, the kind of the, the main city is Knoxville over there and then Chattanooga down to the south a little bit and then of course the west is Memphis over by Arkansas and Memphis doesn't we don't really claim Memphis it doesn't feel like Tennessee to us it just feels like some uh, kind of wonky place over there that's sketchy um, but they do have some great food so so we appreciate that Anyway, uh, again, health-wise, I gotta lose some weight. I, I think it's just age, but I'm working on that. Uh, Liz is doing great. She's so busy and so active. She's Relief Society president again, and I think she was one of the reasons we 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 moved where we moved. This this ward, I just think, uh, has embraced her. Everyone loves her. She's just a magnet. She's always been that way. She has just, every woman in the ward, I mean, her phone is constantly ringing. Those of you from Riverton especially will know how Liz is. And uh, she's off right now taking an 86-year-old woman to her doctor appointment and to go buy some groceries to teach her how to use the free uh, transit system that they have out here kind of in the smaller suburbs for people who don't, who can't afford Uber or whatever, they can come by and pick them up for free and take them. Um, but she's just constantly being asked for advice and counsel. And here, you know, she's brand new to the area, but she's just spectacular. And uh, I just love her. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, so we got Jeff Lynn tomorrow night. The weather's good. Life is great fat boy, gonna get thin again. Oh, A Marvelous Work. Those of you that have been watching A Marvelous Work, um, you know, it's it's sponsored, produced, paid for by Scripture Central, uh, an amazing organization, an amazing nonprofit that's been around for decades. Uh, you can look them up on YouTube, Scripture Central or Book of Mormon Central. And, you know, they do all kinds of uh, educational and inspirational videos about the scriptures and the history of the church and a marvelous work really represents a real departure for them uh, and a real risk I think for their brand and what they represent and um, so I don't know how much more we'll be doing the show uh, there um, I 
I don't think it's a question of funds anymore, to be honest. Uh, I think it's just a question of philosophy. And uh, there's no ill will or hard feelings. I understand completely uh, their position. I mean, th this was, this is their show. It was, it's their idea. Um, and we've delivered everything that they wanted, uh, what they asked for. Um, but, and more. So I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss uh, because viewership is quite good. Um, the, the results, the anecdotal results, the feedback that we get is exactly, I think, what people were hoping for, which is very positive. It's similar in a way to Granite Flats, for those of you that remember Granite Flats, which was on BYU TV and they still own it. And the producers have been trying for years to get it back from BYU, to, to, to buy it away from BYU TV because others are interested in continuing this series. But BYU TV won't apparently relinquish it even though they they don't air, i mean it's on their it's it's on their app you can still find it you can still watch it all three seasons but by now we would have had eight or nine successful seasons um but they had scratchingly terminated it again in the face of performance expectations you know, through the roof. I'm starting to think it's me. <laughs> I, I'm starting to think that I, I am a curse on certain projects. I hope I'm not. But um, anyway, so a marvelous work. The, the latest plan is that uh, we there's supposed to be a, a final episode for this year. There's still talk that it, it could uh, continue next year, but perhaps with a different brand or under a different umbrella or somewhere else, because it's it really is good. If you haven't watched it, um, I think it is. Maybe I'm delusional, but I I, I just think for what, what we do. Hey, Holly. I think Holly's an... Uh, I think Holly's a relative of mine. <laughs> uh, but for what we do with the, with the series, I think it really is pretty good. Um, so the idea is, I think, to have one final episode for this season, uh, which is a two-part episode. Um, and we'll see if that happens or not. I can't give any details. I won't divulge more. I, I don't think I've said too much. I think... By now, you deserve to know why hasn't there been an episode out lately, uh, what's happening. And, and again, I, uh, you know, I think they're just kind of figuring out where it's going to go and what it'll do. But we, we, should have, we should have more soon. So as for Granite Flats, from what I understand, there's also still workings behind the scenes of John Plummer and others trying to get uh, Jeff Miller and others trying to get uh, it's still going. You know, you've got Charlie Plummer who played little uh, Billy. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> who played uh, the kid with the glow, Timmy, who's now, you know, 23 or whatever, and is literally an indie movie star in his own right. Uh, he's even broken out and done some kind of commercialized bigger films too but but i mean charlie Plummer, you know has clout and now that it's been like 10 years since we last did granite flats he's old enough to actually play himself in the new version that was written seven or eight years ago that we actually shot the first episode of with other actors playing timmy and madeline and arthur older grown-up actors well now these actors at least charlie is is uh 
I think he's interested in, in revisiting Timmy and playing Timmy as an adult uh, and possibly as a CIA agent. I won't say much more than that. But um, so that's all been, there's just so many things to pray for, I guess is my, is what I live for, is, um, you know, a marvelous work, granite flats. There's another program I shot a couple years ago a travel series that is so cool uh, and so much fun. Oh my gosh. Uh, we went all over Namibia, Africa, South Africa, the UK, Europe. We had plans to go so many cool places. Uh. <laughs> and it just still hasn't found a home. And uh, again, I think it's the curse of Scott Christopher. So if you know anyone who has any cool projects, and I would be perfect for them, don't hesitate to not recommend me. Because by doing so, inevitably, that project will be summarily dismissed by, you know, whatever streaming platform or network finds it to be successful. Does that make sense? Success breeds failure and rejection. <laughs> and that's why I love being in Tennessee. I've got my, my Honda 1800 Cruiser. I, I take it to the gym every day. I go on other rides through these winding, beautiful country pastoral settings. And just let go, baby. It's so sweet. All right. I have wasted your time. If you have any comments, questions, doubts, or suggestions, uh, you may leave something in the comment box. 37 minutes. Mercy, mercy me. Thanks for watching. Um, if I come up with anything else that's reasonably important, I'll be back. Currently in my free time, I am ideating <clears throat> some way to, to do more of this, but with more of a focused reason than just me rambling on my back deck. Okay, from all of us here in mid-10, we'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.